Ever since Ronald Reagan was sworn in as President of the United States of America on January 20th, 1981, we have seen America go way downhill. Two recessions that screwed over the middle class, forced the elderly of the time to go back to work, forced schools to quit making nutritious meals for students, etc. And every election since the 1980 election, there has been a bias in media favoring Democrats and Republicans. 1992 would be an interesting year because a third-party candidate was nominated for presidency, but the Electoral College was not ready for an independent candidate to be elected. Instead, we had an incompetent governor with a sexual appetite sell off our national parks to foreign countries. While a lot of people love to tut about how Donald Trump did this and that, the reality is that corporations and banks are the real leaders and the Electoral College consists of politicians that are in the back pockets of lobbyists. Why did Donald Trump get elected in 2016 when Hillary Clinton had the popular votes? Because Hillary was corrupt and Trump was clueless on how to run a country, much less a business. So Trump became the J.R. Ewing of America, constantly making deals to fool Americans that the times were booming when in reality there were a lack of regulations. The lack of regulations that would allow corporations to get away with lying so profits can soar. Under fascism, corporations are allowed to exist, but they have to be highly regulated and honest. Also under fascism, corporations cannot lay off employees, but rather cut hours or cut pay. America is a capitalist society. Now to some clueless individual watching this video, they will say, Capitalism is why we have internet and cell phone and the right to voice your concerns. That could not be further from the truth. Capitalism censors innovation by pandering to banks and corporations. Take for instance, I made a video originally on Odyssey called Innovations That Could Have Served the Common Man. In that video, I talked about how innovations like the Tom Ogle engine, Warding Cliff Tower, tool shed houses, voluntary withholding, and alternative cancer treatments could have benefited mankind. Unfortunately, the Tom Ogle engine was never patented, which could have allowed for cars to go to 100 miles per gallon. The Warden Cliff Tower was incomplete due to J.P. Morgan's association with Guglielmo Marconi. Toolshed houses would have accommodated single people during hard times. Voluntary withholding could have created a better welfare system without being taxed. And alternative cancer treatments are frowned upon due to an industry that thrives on money and death. That's what capitalism is. Charging for what you need and censoring the benefits of what is intended to be free. So much for a free market in a capitalist society. Nonetheless, the banks and the corporations stifle innovation, overwork people to death for a good chunk of taxes, and tell the politicians who is the next president of the United States. This was something that Richard Nixon realized in 1973 when he was framed for Watergate, forcing him to resign in 1974. All because Richard Nixon criticized the Jews and criticized Golda Meir for her policies. That was when we the people should have realized that the president is not a leader that serves the citizens, but rather the banks and corporations. So if you looked at the track record of the election since 1980, how much did America struggle to the point of dependence on the capitalist state? From 1981 and 1989, we saw the destruction of the middle class, old people forced to go back to work, drug epidemics skyrocketing, kids forcibly dropping out of school to support their families, welfare state is overwhelmed, and people are forced to eat junk food to survive. It did not get any better when George Bush Sr. was elected in 1988. Bad foreign policies and an obsession with oil in the Middle East screwed Bush over big time. Then that sex pest Democrat Bill Clinton was elected screwing women and screwing over America at the same time. We thought that the times were good in the late 1990s, but it was a lie just like Donald Trump as president from 2017 to 2021. A lie. Ever since Joe Biden was elected, we've seen a meteoric rise of communist doctrines not seen since the 1950s. Something that would have made a modern day communist an outcast of society. The sad part is that communism is gaining ground due to Kamala Harris and the fact that her father Donald Harris was a Marxist professor. If it were up to the communists today, the election system would end and whoever is in charge of the communist party would ban elections and the constitution. We should not have to worry every four years on who is going to be the leader of the country. We should be worried about securing our borders, bringing troops back to our border instead of a foreign country, kicking out all of the illegals with their American-born kids. Yes. Children born in America to illegal immigrant parents should be revoked of their citizenship and deported. That way children are not separated from their parents when facing deportation. Since Ronald Reagan's corporate policies were put in place, we've seen a lot of bad things happen to people both financially and emotionally. Can't live in a nice house for $25,000 anymore. Men and women are discouraged from having babies believing it would destroy their mental health. That sex should be for pleasure instead of reproduction purposes. We can't fix homes without acquiring over 9,000 permits. We can't own property without paying a thousand types of taxes every year. And if you were a businessman before 1981, 
Every tax break from the small businessman helped sustain local businesses in town. Corporations and banks implemented the sink or swim policy, and if you refused to sell out to corporations, the corporations would disparage the small business. Because of how powerful corporations and banks have become, small business continues to struggle and Main Street has been suffering every year since 1981. What is the moral of the story? We allowed corporations and banks to dictate who is the best candidate for the job, but the Electoral College does not favor us. They favor the corporations and the banks. So regardless of whether you vote for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, you are wasting your time. If you vote, you are supporting Wall Street, not Main Street.